If you've been looking for an on-the-go desktop computer, well, you just found it inside of the MSI GT77 Titan. This thing comes with the i9-12900HX and RTX 3080 Ti. It comes with a MX Cherry Keys keyboard that looks absolutely gorgeous and sounds even better, and a large glass trackpad to top it all off, as well as a webcam. And tell me a desktop PC that comes with a webcam. If you can think of one, we'll just don't comment below. Let's give you a quick sample of what it sounds like to type on the keyboard and click through the trackpad. Check it out right now. And of course, for that webcam, here's a quick sample of the webcam so you can see what that looks like. Here is a sample of the webcam on the MSI GT77 Titan and a little sample of the audio for you as well. Now, lastly, we have upward facing speakers here on the keyboard deck, and here's a quick audio sample so you can hear what that immersive experience sounds like. Now the keyboard is great. It's tightly fit into this nice cluster. It has a small numpad and you have access to a lot of quick function keys along the top of the keyboard. Overall, I love this outside of the two thirds shift key. I wish I had a full size shift key. I'm a huge sucker for a full size shift key. So if I have one complaint about this keyboard, it's the lack of the full size shift key. It just really irritates me if you can't tell. Next thing let's talk about is the ports. And this thing does come with quite a bit of them. You have the coveted SD card reader, headphone jack, two USB type A's, and then that's your power adapter for your power cord. On the other side, we have a network port, HDMI, mini display port, two USB type C's and a USB type A. So a lot of connectivity, not as much as a full desktop system, but pretty darn close if I must say. Now, checking out the bottom cover of this laptop, during my unboxing, I took off the bottom plate and there was tons of upgrade opportunity. You had the opportunity for four RAM sticks, four SSDs. It was unreal how much power can be packed into this laptop. So if you're looking for a laptop that can be upgraded, this is the one. It is incredible. Now, let's go ahead and jump into the performance section before I continue on any longer for the features. And let's go ahead and check out the simulated benchmarks. Simulated benchmarks are great. They're gonna show off really well with this laptop because it crushes nearly all of them. But what I'm more concerned about is the real world benchmarks. And the first one we're gonna jump into is Autodesk 3ds Max and Autodesk Maya. And it gets well above your average RTX 3070 Ti and even 3080 Ti. It was insane to see how well a large bodied, well ventilated laptop can push the components when given the opportunity. Now shifting over to PTC Creo and SolidWorks, PTC Creo was not even a competition against other laptops, but do note, because this is not a workstation GPU, SolidWorks was not the top of the charts for the MSI GT77. The workstation GPUs inside of the StudioBook Pro 16 and the ZBook Fury G8 were better than the GT77. Now that's not to say that this doesn't have tons of performance, but SolidWorks loves workstation GPUs. In fact, they would say they recommend slash require them. And so you will not be getting absolutely amazing performance in SolidWorks. That will be left to the workstation GPUs. Now looking at Blender Classroom, I was quite impressed by this laptop, scoring a 962 in Blender Classroom. If you're a Blender user, you're gonna absolutely crush it with this laptop. Moving on to After Effects, same thing. We had a 1217 with the closest score from a similarly equipped Acer Predator Triton 500 SE having a 921. Now moving on to Photoshop, once again, not even coming close by over 300 points. It's pretty crazy. You don't need that much performance in Photoshop, but if you want it, you got it. It's This laptop crushes it. Now looking at Premiere Pro Playback, I am still yet to see zero drop frames for red footage, but this is one of the lowest laptops that I have seen for red footage at 43 drop frames at full quality playback. 
inside of Premiere Pro. So 4K, no problem. 6K B-RAW, no problem. Red footage, close to no problem, but still 43 drop frames, but I honestly think you won't even notice those amount of drop frames. <clears throat> now this is the officially the best export time I have seen out of Premiere Pro on my channel, two minutes and 23 seconds for a nine minute 4K clip out of Premiere Pro. And then for 6K B-RAW, once again, the best export time I've seen at 13 minutes and four seconds. Now, if you're a DaVinci Resolve, user, you're going to have a good export time at 4 minutes and 33 seconds. The Legion 5 Pro did beat that out. Last year's Legion 5 Pro is a showstopper, but it, this still has a great export time out of DaVinci Resolve if you're a Resolve user. Now, the real question is, with all this performance, how hot is this laptop getting? And it's not getting hot. We didn't even break 60 degrees Celsius for the 4K export times on the different fan modes. And in regards to the Photoshop thermal temperatures, we only saw a breakover point of 68 degrees Celsius on extreme mode. So for video editing, it stays extremely cool. For Photoshop, it stays very cool. And you're not even gonna notice this laptop is getting very hot. Now, the decibels for the fan noise wasn't even even that crazy. The highest we saw for extreme mode was 45 decibels, but on average we were seeing zero to 35 decibels. So it stays really cool and you're not even using a lot of fan noise to get it that cool. So incredible. Now, one area that I was surprised it actually fared decently well in was battery life. Now, it was not good by any stretch of the imagination, but it got two hours of battery life for video editing playback, and I really thought it was going to be like under an hour with how much performance this laptop packs, but I was pleasantly surprised. And if you're doing productivity tasks with this laptop on super battery saver mode, you can actually get seven hours and 47 minutes out of the battery, which is amazing. Now that's that's to say it's gonna be like your best case scenario. You might fare around the five to six hour range if you know you don't have a full charge or maybe your screen was like fully bright. This is about a 30% screen brightness for this specific test. So just keep that in mind, but still to have in that range for such a big, powerful laptop was quite a pleasant surprise. Now, if you're curious about the exact pricing and availability, you can use the links in the description below to check that out. And if you wanna make a purchase, that will give me a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. But of course, that's what keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. Likes of this video has brought you some value and subs if you don't wanna miss out on the future uploads. I'll see you here in the next one.